Hi, it's me again. Um, today we're going to be talking about economic systems. Before I begin to talk about the economic systems, let me, let's review what the definition of economics is. Remember, in economics we study how individuals and societies seek to satisfy their needs and wants through incentives, choices, and allocation of scarce resources. We know that we have to make choices. We've talked about that. We can't have it all. But how is a society going to choose what we do have and what we don't have? Well, for this, they set up economic systems. These systems are set up specifically to answer the three economic questions. Now, these three questions are, what should we produce? How should we produce it? And who should get it? And there's different ways we can answer these questions, which is going to come up with some different results. And it all depends on an economics goals and values. The first economic system that we can talk about is a traditional economy. Now, traditional economies are found in rural, underdeveloped countries. These are like the pygmies of the Con Congo, Eskimos, Indian tribes. Um, very small, very small groups. In this kind of economy, customs govern the economic systems that are made. So they do things based on the way they've always done it. Now the advantages of this is that people have specific roles. There's security in the way things are done. Um, men and women usually have very defined roles, um, usually very, you know, very gender specific. Um, there's no question on kind of what you're going to do or how you're going to do it. You're going to do it the way things have always been done. The disadvantages is that technology is not used and it becomes very difficult to improve um, and to increase their standard of living. The second kind of economic system is a market system. This is also called a free market economy or a free enterprise economy. In this kind of economy, it's the businesses and consumers who decide what they will produce and purchase and in what quantities. This all comes from supply and demand. The supply and demand of goods and services, that's what decides what's produced and the price that will be charged. Um, if people want it, they'll demand it, and so therefore it will be supplied. Now, the advantages is that you have competition to have the best products and services. But the disadvantage is there can be a huge rift between wealthy and poor because um, there's no, nothing built in to make sure that there's an equality um, between the two. Now, I know a true market economy does not exist. Because a true market economy, notice I haven't mentioned the government at all. In a true market economy, the government would, would perform very limited functions, such as protecting private property and um, like keeping the general rule of law. But obviously, in the United States, for example, even though we have our economy is close to a market economy, we do have a government that makes a lot of decisions for us. The next kind of economy is a command economy. Now in a command economy, the government or the central authority is going to determine what, how, and for whom goods and services are produced. The government makes all the decisions. They decide um, what's going to be made, how it's going to be made, and who's going to get it. There's two types of command economies we could look at. A strong command economy where the government makes all the decisions. So communism would be an example. This is like China, Cuba the former Soviet Union. In a moderate command economy, this is where some form of private enterprise exists, but the state owns major resources. Um, this is socialism usually. France and Sweden are examples of that. Now, the disadvantages is that you've got some minimal choices in this kind of economy. Because because the government's deciding what to make, they don't they're not going to make what just a few people want. They're going to make what the majority want, or maybe just what the majority need. There's fewer choices of items, and there's no incentive to produce a better product or engage in entrepreneurship. The advantages is it guarantees an equal standard of living for everyone. This is in theory because co corruption can exist, and that can throw that off. There can be less crime and poverty, in theory, if the economy does well. Uh, needs are provided for it through the government. In theory, again, if you're part, because remember, this assumes the government will know what you need and, and will provide it in that way.
The final kind of economy is a mixed economy. Now, most nations have a mixed economy. The United States, England, Australia, most of the ones in the world. Now, this is a combination of a market and a command economy. In this economy, the government takes care of people's needs, but the marketplace takes care of people's wants. There's more of a safety net than there would be otherwise. The advantage is there's a balance of needs and wants met by the government and in the marketplace. The disadvantage is that citizens have to pay taxes and people don't often like that. Again, as I said earlier, most nations do have a mixed economy. Um, and again, this it kind of combines those things. Look at these two pictures here. We've got the welfare benefits providing for the, the kind of safety net for the poor, but yet there's a supermarket full of goods that appeal to everyone. The United States falls under this category. So these four types of economic systems Again, they answer the three economic questions. What should we produce? How should we produce it? And who should get it? Now, each one is different because each country chooses a different kind of economic system because they have different goals, different things that they value. In a command economy, for example, the people value most to have security and to have equity. That means fairness. In a market economy, um, freedom is valued more than that. Um, and economic growth is valued. And so in a traditional economy, um, the traditions are valued and that security is valued. And so it's not that one economy is better than another, although people obviously disagree on that, but each one meets different goals better than others.